Okay, thank you everyone for being here for this lovely event to celebrate Claire and hear more about her and her work. Uh, I'm Sam Jocelyn. I'm the public art manager for COCA. So part of my job is to manage the exhibitions and the artwork that goes into the airport as well as city hall. So today, Claire and I will kind of be having a conversation about her work and I'll be asking her some questions and you're welcome to, if you have some questions to pop them in the chat or comments, but we will open the floor up to questions at the end. So we are going to share a slideshow and then I'll let Claire introduce herself and we can get started. Hi, my name is Claire. Um, thank you to everyone who's able to be here with us today. Um, I'm going to be sharing a little bit about some of my um, work that uh, some of some of the things you're going to see on the slideshow are part of the airport exhibition and some of them are um, not part of it. Just this is just more recent work from the last like five or six years. Um, yeah, my husband and I moved to Tallahassee at the end of 2022, so we've been here a little over a year, um, and this is my first time um, really getting involved with COCA, um, and so I'm excited to be here. Cool. So what brought you to Tallahassee? Uh, my husband's work. He transferred up here from, we were living in Miami before. Nice. Nice. Is Tallahassee is a lot different from Miami. It is, but it's such a welcome <laughs> change. I love having seasons and um, everybody's so nice here. Um, it's been really, really a uh, very peaceful transition. It's very different, but it's been great for our family. Oh, good. Uh, could we go back to the first slide? And then the next one, I think. And then we can pause it there for a second. Perfect. Okay, so I noticed that you do a lot of paintings of clouds. Can you tell me a little bit about, about that? Do you do it from observation or images or both? Uh, yeah, both. Um, I've always really enjoyed painting clouds, but um, in 2020 during the pandemic, um, I just started paying a lot more attention to the sky because I couldn't go anywhere. I couldn't do anything. And um, <clears throat> one of my friends kept saying, you know, if you don't have any, if you don't know where to look, look up. And I, I just, I loved that. And um, so started um, paying attention to just cloud formations and um, painting them based on, you know, sometimes sitting outside, sometimes um, taking photos, sometimes kind of combining the two. Um, and yeah, before, before that, I had never really thought of a cloud as being, being able to be a standalone uh, painting that the subject matter was a little too boring, but I found that they were, the more I paid attention to them, the more I was like, no, this is complete. This is a complete image in and of itself. Like, I just wanted to really kind of try to uh, celebrate the sky. There's so much to see. It's constantly moving and um, just really beautiful to me. So yeah, yeah, that's it. That's interesting. You seem to pay more attention to like the visual aspects of your subject matter as opposed Definitely. to having some sort of deep uh, conceptual meaning. But I appreciate that. Yeah, to me, it's just um, so observation is such an important part mm -hmm. of of painting, just being able to visually study what it is you're working on. Yeah. All right, we can go to the next slide. Let's see what we got. So are you working out of acrylic or oil for these or? Um, both, I think, I think most of the clouds are oil. Um, and most of them I did at the same time within a, a period of like four or five months. So um, I just had had my oil paint out. Um, I don't usually keep oil and acrylic out at the same time. I don't like to mix up my brushes. Um, so, so I go in phases. Sometimes I'm painting in oil, sometimes I'm painting in acrylic. But this slide that we're on right here, um, 
it, it's funny. Those, those were painted actually two years apart and um, they were both taken from the same reference images. I painted them both from the same, same reference images, but you can't, you wouldn't know that by looking at them because the color palettes are so different and the, um, just the cloud formations look so different. And I think that's a, this is a really good example of um, what, <laughs> what happens over time, depending on what you're influenced by and um, what your mood is, or at least for me, um, how mm -hmm. different um, two, two very similar paintings can actually be, um, there's not, not really much about them at all. That's that similar. Um, but yeah, the, the, the reference photos I was, I took in a matter of maybe like 20 minutes, um, on a morning, you know, early morning sunrise. And, um, so, so the, the, the reference photos didn't really look this different just for some reason, I translated them very differently in my mind. <laughs> So interesting. Is this in Miami, these clouds? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I guess I don't know much about clouds, but do you feel like they're, they vary a lot from place to place or they're kind of depends on the time of day and the weather? Or? Uh, yeah. I mean, there are a lot of factors that go into it. Um, in Miami, they've, <clears throat> they've, <laughs> they've managed to like bulldoze a lot of trees and Miami is super flat. So you can really, you can see the sky unless you're, um, you know, downtown surrounded by buildings. Um, and most of, most of the city, you just, you see the sky a lot. Um, it's just so flat and there's, you know, not tons and tons of high rises, especially the area where we lived. Um, so yeah, I think, I think um, being by the water, I saw a whole lot more cumulus clouds than um, I really see here. I'm trying to think of here, here where where we live in a really hilly neighborhood, surrounded by trees. So I don't. I feel like the trees are are what I'm seeing all the time now, and what I'm looking at and thinking about painting more than than the sky. <clears throat> nice. Okay. This kind of looks like when you start getting into water, because I know here we are. Your show has a lot of paintings of water and it's almost kind of eerie because it looks like you're in the middle of the ocean. Like there's no grounding reference. So do you use reference photos for these two? And do you take those pictures yourself? I do. I, I try to to take reference photos. I um tend to not take really great ones. So there it's kind of a combination of reference photos and memory. Mm -hmm. um, for water, but I spent a lot of time studying water before I really attempted to start painting it. Cause it's really confusing. It's moving so fast. And, um, <clears throat> the light source, even though there's only one sun, it's, it's hitting in so many different places at one time. And, um, so it's really, for me, it was really hard to wrap my head around, how to go about painting water, but I wanted to, you know, living, I, we were in Miami for 10 years. And, um, so we, I saw the water so often, but it actually wasn't until we left Miami and moved here that I started painting the water. <laughs> um, it was like all of that time, all of those memories. And then like, we got here to Tallahassee and then I was like, okay, now it's time to, to do the thing that I've been studying for so long. Um, yeah, it seems kind of reflective almost. Yeah. Well, that's very, yeah, I love these ones. Like I said, they're so beautiful, but they've got this kind of darkness to them almost like a feeling of being stranded sometimes. <laughs> I guess they're like in the middle of the ocean. I think there's, um, there's so, so much about, about water that you can, you can, you can draw from it. You know, some people are like, oh, these are peaceful. And other people are like, wow, these are scary. Like you're saying like, oh, there's no grounding points. Like I'm right in the middle of the ocean. That's <laughs> kind of terrifying. Um, and yeah, I, I, I like, I like the idea of being able to um, kind of, it, it's like these paintings become then very personal to the viewer, you know, mm -hmm. um, kind of it's like, what is it that you, are seeing from this is this a, is this peaceful is this calming or does this look really stormy or um you know <laughs> both happening at the same time yeah 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 that's interesting go to the next slide so 
So you have an interesting story about this one. I remember the one on the right. Oh, in the last slide. So this one on the right here. Yeah. Can you tell us about that one? Yeah. So where you see the foam uh, where the water is breaking <clears throat> all the white, this was actually a different painting. So I, I, I like to reuse canvases if I've painted something and sat with it for a while and I just don't really like it or I don't feel like it's finished. A lot of times I'll turn it into a different painting. Um, so you'll see a lot of texture um, on a lot of my canvases where there's like other stories that were written underneath that have been painted over. So this one was a cloud painting and where you see the white, all of the white, that, those, that was actually part of the cloud. And so when I decided to paint this on top of it, I just sort of painted around that um, and left that, that cloud section there and turned it into the foam, which is like a really, um, I don't know. I don't, I don't like wasting things. Mm -hmm. and I don't like to ever think of, oh, I wasted time making a painting I didn't like, or I wasted materials or I wasted this canvas. I like to think of everything I do as practice. Um, even the finished work, it's practice for the next thing that I'm working on. So, um, you know, for, for, for me, this is like a good visual representation and reminder that something I did before actually contributed in a really positive way to something that now is, you know, has been sold and is hanging in someone else's home. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, so it's not, you know, I don't, it, it helps me to not to, to, it helps me to feel like I haven't wasted time or energy or anything. It's actually, um, turns, you know, it's a way of turning spent work and spent energy into the next finished product. So, yeah. yeah. And it's really interesting. And I think that's something you don't get from, you know, as artists, um, sometimes the pictures that you can take of your work end up being more important than the actual work. Cause that's what gets you into shows and that's what people yeah. see online, but it's interesting because I did notice it in person and you can kind of tell in this picture I don't know much about painting, but I knew enough for some of them to kind of question. I thought, I wonder if there's a different painting underneath this and if it's Claire's painting or I know some artists who will get paintings from like the thrift store and paint over those and use that as their canvas. So I thought yeah, that was a good idea. I was actually thinking of that earlier, how, um, you know, I, I do have so many canvases that I haven't yet painted over that just have like old, what I would consider like junk paintings. And I was thinking like, once I run out of those, I would be interested in buying other people's old work that they, that they didn't like, that they were going to get rid of because they thought it was, you know, a waste um, and, you know, buying it for cheap to use the canvas to paint over. That would be really cool to paint on top of someone else's work. It would feel um, sacrilegious or something a little bit, but, uh, if someone was willing to let you do that, I think that that'd be really neat because then all of a sudden their work becomes a part of your story and your work. Um, I haven't done that yet, but I'd be interested. Yeah. It's an interesting concept. Those materials are just so expensive now. Yeah, they are. Mm -hmm. All right, we can go to the next one. So are both of these two in the show currently? I know the one that was on the right was. Uh, on the previous slide? Mm -hmm. Yes, I think both of those are. Okay. Well, getting it. Oh, yeah. Okay, here we are. <laughs> I I definitely remember this one. Um but a little bit about like your color palette, because you use a lot of, I would say, like blues and purples, a lot of cool tones. Is that something intentional or is that kind of just how you're basically interpreting what you're seeing? It's, pro I, it's probably my interpretation of what I'm seeing and what happens to be on my palette if I still have wet paint <laughs> on my palette. Um, and also just my my taste. I don't know. I'm I feel like I've put a lot of green into a lot of the water mm -hmm. um, and because I'm just like in a green green mood I don't know I've been I want everything to be green I painted my kitchen green I, <laughs> I don't know I'm I love green and I have for the last few years so um 
yeah, it probably has to do with um, a combination of like my taste, but also maybe what I'm actually seeing or think that I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. Or just what's what's there at the moment. I like that answer too. <laughs> Well, getting into, I know the next slide, um, once it gets to there, has the plants. So you have a lot of like water and kind of sunsets and then these kind of standalone blank backgrounds, but with shadows, plant stems. So how did these kind of start and when did you start doing these? Uh, I think this was 2019 and these were some of my... Um, first paintings when I was had become committed to try to um, paint every single day and um, change career paths from being a graphic designer to being a full-time artist um, and so I had I had a subscription to a company called Books. It's like a floral delivery company they once a month they send you a box of um flowers and leaves and um no no vase or anything you're supposed to put the arrangement together okay. yourself so it's so it's kind of discounted for that reason and the very first one that they sent me was this tropical arrangement with these types of florals and leaves and I was like oh my gosh this is so cool then after that the um the arrangements that I got weren't as exciting to me so I ended up canceling that subscription but it was fun because I I just wanted to be able to hold the the hold the things in my hand and, and like turn them over and look at them rather than trying to work from reference photos. Um, I'm not a good gardener. Um, so it's, it's rare that I have a lot of nice flowers in my own yard to work from. Um, so normally when I'm painting florals and things, I either um, <clears throat> will paint like a potted plant that I have, or you know, I'm working from reference photos. So these were fun because I had the actual, I had these kinds of actual flowers um, yeah. And I don't know, I think I started not really knowing where it was going. I was, I just wanted to paint the flowers. I didn't want anything else going on. I didn't want any background or vase or anything. I just, mm -hmm. just wanted to kind of get to know the subject that I was painting. So, um, that's where these came from. I think they were painted around maybe like a few months apart. Um, I think I started on them at the same time. And then I think, I think I, I think the one on the right is acrylic. And I think the one on the left, I started in acrylic and then I went back over it in oil um, to finish it. So I guess they started around the same time. Um, okay. Was there a reason for going over it in oil or is that just what you had? Um, I think it just didn't look very alive to me. Okay. There's something about oil paint that, um, I don't know, has seems to me to have more life in it. Um, not that acrylic can't, um, I think it just takes like a, a certain hand in acrylic to, um, not really sure what I'm trying to say, but no, I, I kinda, it, it makes, a, it makes a little bit of sense. Yeah. Um, so once I went back over it with oil, it felt finished and looked, okay. looked better. I thought like the colors are maybe like richer or deeper. Yeah. 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 My limited knowledge from intro to painting in college. <laughs> and I think the next slide also has a couple of these too. And I'm, if I'm remembering correctly, it's the one with the purple background. There it goes. Yeah. yeah. So these were um, several years later, but okay. again, same same kinds of flowers. So at this point, I was not working from life. I was working from photos I'd taken of some of these plants. Um, and the background of the one on the left is a monstera that grew so big in a pot in my house. I did end up planting it um, in my backyard in Miami. And hopefully it's still there. It was huge. It took over the back garden. Um, oh it was really, those, those do really well there. Um, and yeah, so these, these were so fun to paint that I ended up painting, um, the nursery in our house. We're having a baby, um, soon. And I ended up painting her nursery and these kinds of florals. Um, Oh, it's a girl. Yeah. <laughs> That's so lovely. She's so lucky. <laughs> I hope she likes it. I have, a, have this feeling that she's going to be wild and these feel wild to me. So I think this will fit. <laughs> how big is the, how big is the mural in her room? 
Um, it's just one wall and it's half, it's actually half of the wall. Um, we like built something underneath on the bottom. So it's, um, what did I determine? I think it's 112 inches across. Oh my goodness. What is that? 10 feet? Is that 10 feet? I'm not good at mental math, but it sounds. <laughs> I think it's about 10 feet, <laughs> 10 feet wide, but only maybe, um, it's like half the wall. So maybe like four, maybe more than half the wall. Maybe it was like five feet high. Okay. So um took some that's, time and it's a little bit sloppy but it's like fun it's just it was fun to paint so oh, no, like I'm it. sure I'm sure it's great how unique and then I think I'm trying to remember this slideshow but the next one it's still the plants but it's more just green plants yeah here we go so the one on the left again is that monstera that um lives in my our old backyard in Miami. Um, that was really fun to paint because it was, I don't know, it was, just, it was a fun plant. It grew really fast. It's fun to watch it grow. And those, the leaves are so um, lively. They're just like always <laughs> moving around and um, it kind of, I don't know, weirdly reminded me of one of my dogs, the the, the <laughs> way that the leaves take shape and it, like I could like almost see his face in it. So, um, and then the one on the right is a ficus, which I ended up leaving that plant there too. Um, that was a fun one to paint. But yeah, these were all kind of painted around the same time, 2019-ish, 2018, 2019, when I was just, I really liked having just the plain white or gray or cream background with the just the plant nothing else <laughs> yeah no, they you do capture the movement really well though especially in the monstera one um i i too have a monstera and it tends to wiggle around yes. yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're fun they're so fun they're um definitely definitely alive i mean obviously plants are living things but like it's just so fun to have them in your house and to see how they move around and you walk out of the room and you come back and they're in a different position yeah. it's kind of creepy actually you're like are you also listening to me like are you is there more going on here than, than i realize but yeah plants, plants that's are awesome yeah well we can go to the next slide i think it's some more of the plants and i remember you I had a funny story again <laughs> about this potted plant who might may now have um, been injured. He is he has passed on. So <laughs> the the potted plant that was our rubber tree, and that was the first time we went to Tallahassee. Is it Tallahassee Gardens on um on Thomasville? I think that's the name of it. Tallahassee Nursery, Tallahassee Garden. Oh, Tallahassee Nurseries. Mm -hmm. Nursery, yeah, 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 Tallahassee Nurseries. Um, the first time we went there, I saw this plant there, and it was so beautiful. And so I brought it home, and um, you know, potted it and put it in our living room. And I kept finding the leaves on the ground, but they were they were like completely intact, beautiful, big, thick, glossy green leaves. It didn't look like they were had died and fallen off. And I didn't know, I couldn't figure out what was going on. And this went on for months until finally I realized that my two-year-old was, was pulling them off. And I don't know how he was doing it when I wouldn't, I just wouldn't see it. And he, he had become fascinated by the idea of cutting down trees because we had to have a tree cut down in our front yard. And he watched the whole thing. There were like, 11 guys and four mm -hmm. cranes and like it was this whole production a whole day that it took them to to take this tree this dead tree down and he was just fascinated with this idea of cutting down trees and so once I realized what was going on then I started finding finding his dump trucks in the pot and he was just the, to him he just had it in his mind he was going to cut down this tree and he he really he really did he really oh, did he really gosh. ended the life of this plant but i did find a new plant to put in the pot and he's a little older now and he understands that that's not okay and he has not harmed the new plant so i'm sad but i'm really happy that i had a chance to paint this one because um it yes it's it his memory lives on yes exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we can go through these next slides i think they're kind of similar um subject matter at least but the colors are very different so is this still from when you were kind of getting that those stems in the subscription boxes yeah um the 
maybe not this purple eucalyptus. I don't know. I'm not really sure how it got so purple, I think. Um, and then sunflowers. I've always loved sunflowers. I love painting and drawing them because again, they're, they're kind of sim and similar to monsteras in that they are like constantly moving, especially the mammoth sunflowers that were the big ones. They are always like turning their heads to me. They look like little people. Um, so it's, it's almost painting sunflowers. It's like a painting portraits. Um, I've heard a lot of people say that. You have? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah sunflowers because they're just they're again just so alive <laughs> yeah. um, I know a lot of artists that use sunflowers as like stand-ins for people because they do have have those kind of anthropomorphic qualities to them mainly the way they move that's so cool yeah I'll have to get you some references of yeah. some people I'm thinking about but with that, I, I've noticed sunflowers also mean a lot to a lot of people. Oh, yeah. I love the, these ones. I know this left one is in your show in the airport. I don't think the one on the right is. No, that one belongs to someone else now. Um, <clears throat> but that was a, a fun one. The the cabbage, I think it was actually kale. Um, and the, that was that was from a live bouquet that I picked up at Whole Foods. Um, that was just like weird. I, I don't even remember what the what are pincushion protea proteas i think the orange ones mm -hmm. um i have never seen those in a like store again but those were really fun to paint and then the the poppies are just fun but again those were from from just photos i i didn't have those in real life well and i know the next slide kind of shifts things a little bit and it yes. starts to show us some work that is very different from what's in your exhibition in the airport. So um, the first half of that slideshow was paintings and now we're moving into drawings. So I think that um, I studied my BFA was in studio art with an emphasis in painting and drawing. So for me, painting and drawing are um, go hand in hand. I, I just like I love drawing as much as I love painting and I like to draw in color. Um, so a lot of the, a lot of these drawings you'll see are actually done on black paper. Um, <clears throat> it's easier, I think, to see the, um, how vibrant um, colored pencils are when you draw on like a darker surface, the, the, mm -hmm. especially the lighter colors, just really, 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 um, start catching the light and it's kind of a backwards way of of drawing usually you're drawing you know in black or gray on white paper and so instead to draw um in a lighter color on a darker paper um you it gives you an opportunity to to leave some of the dark as shadows and you don't actually have to add shadows and all of a sudden you're just like drawing in the light which is um a really fun way to uh to work so yeah a lot of these next things are just things that I thought would be fun to draw yeah it's interesting the portraits that you've done on the black paper I think in the next one um I've never really seen somebody do that yeah there we go so are these, these were people that you know sorry to interrupt you uh they were these are illustrations for a book um oh. that someone wrote and um but yeah I knew I knew this little girl that's really awesome. I didn't know you illustrated a book. When was that? Um, I did that earlier this year or last year, I guess. Um, <clears throat> but I don't think she's had any luck getting it published. So. Um, well, I hope she does. Yeah, I hope so too. Yeah. Keep look. And then the next slide, I think, goes into the cute animal there we go <laughs> oh, yeah <laughs> uh, these are just some alphabet animals I did for my son's room um I did one for every letter of the alphabet I did fox for x because I couldn't think of an animal that started with x but for the most part it's you know the the animal that an animal that corresponds with the the each letter of the alphabet so those were fun to do and this is just again to to show like 
different stuff. You know, these were just like fun little drawings that drawing slash watercolor paintings that didn't take very much time at all. Um, just kind of like silly little personal work. No, they're nice. I'm, I was wondering, they looked like watercolor to me, but I was going to believe you that you said they were drawings. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but it, this, this section has some things that are uh, watercolor too. Oh, they're so cute. So how big are they? And are they still in his room? They are. They are still in his room. They're eight by tens. I found some um, through Dollar Tree. You can order bulk frames. So I did like a whole gallery wall, um, which took up a lot of space. Eight by 10, you don't think is very big, but when you've got 26 of them, it's like a really big section of the wall. So um, yeah, so my husband hung them for me because I couldn't figure out the math as far as like the spacing of 26 different uh, frames. But yeah, they're they're cute. I think he likes them still. We'll see what happens when he gets older. Well, speaking of your son, I think the next slide is actually a drawing of him. It is. Yeah, my son and husband. So again, yeah, this is on black paper. And I think I only used white pencil. I might have used some some black and gray in it too, but primarily it was just white pencil, which if you've never done that before, it's probably one of the most fun things. I think you can get black paper for, um, I think Canson makes it. Uh, it's really inexpensive for a, for a pad and then just like a white Prismacolor pencil. And and again, it's it's like this, like backwards thing because you're, you know, it's, it's light on dark. So you're not drawing the shadows. You're, you're only drawing the highlights instead, but it is so fun. And, um, you know, I don't know, it's one of those things, like I'll just spend like hours and hours and hours just concentrating on a, uh, a black and white drawing. And it was really satisfying. <laughs> and also, um, you can't really erase it, but if you're drawing, you know, light enough and fast enough, you can really kind of work it so that um, mistakes are not as obvious. Um, so, yeah. I didn't think about that, not being able to erase it. I think the next few here, too, are some more examples of both the black and white drawings as well as some of the portraiture that you do. Yeah, there they are again. Oh yeah, this was um, some uh, commission of some friends' kids. So this was white paper, um, uh, black and gray pencil. But um, I don't do a lot of portrait commissions there because portraits are just so time consuming and it's so <clears throat> it's so hard to capture someone you don't know. And even if you have a million reference photos, like if you don't know their personality. Um, mm. So I really, really struggled with these. I did these and then I did some individual watercolors of these kids too. And I <laughs> sent them to her and she's like, this does not look like my kids. And I was like, I don't know. To me, it looks like the reference photos, but you know, I don't know your kids. So um, that's something I don't, I don't do a ton of just because it's, I find it really, really challenging unless I know the person. Uh, if I know the person, it's, it's so different because their personality can actually come through on the page, but um, yeah. And, you know, I, we, we see that in ourselves. Like I, sometimes I take a picture of myself and I'm like, this is a great photo. Cause it doesn't look anything like me, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like that, that happens to all of us all the time. We can, we can look so different in an image capture. So um, yeah, but it's, it's fun. It's fun practice to do. I think it's, I think it's easier to, to make realistic drawings of imaginary people <laughs> than of yeah. real than to try to actually really portray someone. But. I could see that. The next few, um, they're on black paper as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think the next slide is pretty similar, but they feel to me kind of, kind of like studies in uh, formalism or kind of just practice because they feel so quick and hardly even looks like you ever picked up the pencil. Yeah. And they were, they were, um, a, like a couple of them I did in the car. We, um, went to Destin a lot last summer. Um, it's just a couple hours away and there's a really beautiful beach 
beaches there. And um, so, yeah, I was, it, it was right when I was in the middle of painting a lot of water. So I, I was wanting to just do some, some drawings, some reference drawings. Um, so we would go out during the day and spend some time at the beach. And then I would come back and very quickly kind of try to sketch out what I saw. And then um, I think on our way back, I drew, I did some, some quick water drawings, but yeah, they were, they were really small, like I think five by seven paper. Oh. So um, yeah, just. Do you still have them or do you usually not keep things like this that you do just kind of quickly? No, I, I keep all that kind of stuff. It's good to go back and reference it. Mm -hmm. And I like to, if I ever, um, anytime I teach students, I like to be able to show them my sketchbooks so they can kind of get an idea of like, um, just, you know, the stuff that is never going to go on a wall anywhere, but it's, it's, you know, it's my, it's my practice. And it's, it's, I think important for other people to, to see that and to kind of get comfortable in their own practice. So. Oh, they're, they're still very impressive. Nice. <laughs> and I, I know the next ones, they they feel a lot different and it's, so they're drawings on the black paper still, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so tell me, it seems like the next ones are a lot of food and wrappers and things like that. Were you very, very interested in kind of the visual qualities of these still too? Yeah, I, I think drawing food is so much fun. Um, one, because a lot of times, you know, I'm like, oh, I'm in the mood to draw, but I can't think of something to draw. Well, I always have food around, <laughs> you <Yeah>. know, it's <laughs> always, we've got to eat. There's always, there's always something in the pantry. Um, junk food is, I think, some of the most fun stuff to draw. It's just, it's interesting. It usually has a lot of artificial color and um, just, I, I don't know, like texture and just fun stuff going on. Um, so yeah, these were, um, I don't know, just, just some animal frosted animal cracker, the frost or iced. I don't know. I can't, I think they're the iced kind of iced animal. Crackers. Oh yeah. They're classics. Um, they're, <laughs> they're disgusting. They're delicious. And then we've got <laughs> just more candy. Um, so yeah, the, uh, and you, it's, you know, I, I also like to show these because like a, sometimes the perspective is off and it makes it things kind of like wonky but it's also important to show because it's like this is you know the one on the left that candy drawing it's like I spent hours and hours and hours on this the perspective is weird in a lot of places um but it's still to me a, a finished drawing <laughs> you know my one of my professors was always like oh your perspective <laughs> like get, get it right and I was like I can't I was you know looking down at a bowl of candy and um every time I would come back to it the bowl of candy had turned a little bit but um I don't know I think it's I think sometimes the the mistakes like that kind of can give something a lot of character um and you know it's again it's junk food it's candy it's gross and it's I don't know <laughs> like it's like like there's something that's um, very real about um it being like very imperfect mm -hmm. and and but same with the like yeah. stack of mints too like the one there's just one peppermint on like the right side it's like fall like it, it wouldn't be like that but it was, it was how I drew it because of how I was sitting and, you know, didn't realize until I was finished that the perspective was kind of weird. And I was like, okay, well, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> like I learned to live with that, which is interesting. So I might just let the next few kind of play through. And then if people have questions after that, we can kind of open the floor up to questions or if anyone wants to ask questions in the chat we can do that as well oh yeah they're beautiful yeah so which one claire and i hate when people ask me this but i'm gonna ask you anyways which piece is your favorite not just from the show but just in general my very favorite um my favorite painting in here, um, it's one of the floral paintings <clears throat> and it's favorite because of the story. It's my favorite because of the story behind it. It's um, pink peony 
with um, eucalyptus in the background. And when I first painted it, I had only painted the eucalyptus. Um, and I knew I wanted to put some flowers in there. I was trying to decide what kind. And so I, I thought peonies would be really pretty. So I went to a flower shop and asked the florist, like, hey, do you happen to have any pink peonies? And he's like, no. And he went on this whole big tangent about how he had just fired his vendor who sells him all the roses and peonies because the ones that he got from them were just terrible and um <laughs> we talked for a while and I was like okay well I'll, I'll come check back with you some other time and see if you have any peonies in stock and and he was like well hang on a second um and he went into the back of his shop and he came back and um wrapped in tissue paper he had these three um like I thought they were just like perfect blooms. And he's like, here, you can, you can have these. These are, these are trash to me. Like, you know, these are from the vendor that I fired. I can't sell them. They're worthless. And I opened it up and looked at them and I was like, oh, okay, thank you. You know, and I went home and this, yeah, this painting right here, I went home and painted them. And um, when I finished the painting, I was like, I just started crying. I stepped back and looked at it. And I was like, these, these are, these peonies are the, the focal point of this painting to me they're like the masterpiece and they, these are something that someone else said uh were worthless um and and didn't have any value and to me like they made this painting incredibly valuable um they they brought the whole composition together and they're the thing that you see when you look at it and they're not they're not puny they're not worthless they're not any of the things that he said and so this painting um hangs in my house as a reminder to me of um just how how often we think that maybe we are worthless or um our situation has has rendered something useless when the truth is like nothing is wasted nothing is worthless um especially not any individual human being like we all have value we're all the the crown of creation you know we're all the this beautiful thing to behold. Um, and if someone says otherwise, then that person is just wrong, <laughs> you know? Um, so yeah, it's my favorite for that story. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I love that story. Well, I will give everyone a second if they want to pop a question into the chat. Um, but if not, Everybody, thank you for coming. We are have been recording this session and we'll put it on YouTube. So if you want to share it with anyone who you think would really like it, or if you want to ask Claire any questions later, I know her email is on the online gallery on the COCA website. So under the public art tab, we have online galleries and then Claire's will be right there. So if there's no questions right now, I guess not. Well, it was very informative. I feel like since I was asking you a bunch of questions throughout, maybe I got them all answered. <laughs> well, let's see. There is a question. Oh, someone said, thanks so much for sharing your artistic practice and your thoughts to your process and the wonderful, thoughtful, thoughtful conversation. I appreciate this format very much and the possibility of joining and listening. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You also got a beautiful work comment. <laughs> Well, thank you guys. Thank you. Thanks everyone so much. We really appreciate you being here. And Claire, thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. Well, everyone have a good rest of their night.